players can bury each other in garbage and let things really get up. From the Louisiana Superdome, it's the big boys. Class 5A, the state title, to be decided here between the Ruskin Bearcats and the West Monroe Rebels. Hello once again, everybody. I'm Gerald Doohan, along with Renee Nato. And Renee, these two teams from the same district, this will be a rematch of an earlier meeting that West Monroe got the better end of Ruston. That was October 16th, and it was a 42-6 win that Ruston came out on the short end of it. They want to show that that was all a mistake, and they deserve to be here in the Superdome. For Ruston, one of their offensive players, he does a lot offensively. He'll run the ball, he'll catch the ball. He is Jerry Goldsmith. Jerry Goldsmith, he'll go both ways, number 28, four six speed. But watch him in the first series. He had a 65-yard touchdown run in the first series against Airline and against Washington, first series. He likes to start this game early. Watch out for number 28, Jerry Goldsmith. One of the Rebels who will be in charge of trying to slow Goldsmith down is Brady James, the outside linebacker for West Monroe. And boy, is he good, Gerald. They say he may be the best linebacker out of this area in the last 20 years. Maybe the best linebacker in the South for 1998. 6'3", 230, runs a 4, 4, 4 5, 5, 40 and he arrives in a bad mood. He's a transfer from Wasman, and he's, he's really done it all here. 130 tackles on the year. West Monroe goes for the three-peat here at the Superdome. Their opponent, Rustin, stands between West Monroe and another state title. We'll have the kickoff right around the corner here at the 5A state championship game and the Gatorade Superdome Classic. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 1998 Gatorade Superdome Classic. Before we begin this year's 5A championship, the LHSAA has a very special presentation to make. Making the presentation will be Mr. Jimmy Anderson, president of the Louisiana High School Athletic Association. It is a pleasure and honor to announce Tonight, the Louisiana High School Athletic Association is dedicating the 1998 Gatorade Superdome Classic to the memory of Ronnie Beard, one of our former members and president who passed away this past fall. His wife, Nelda, and his daughter, Lori, and her husband, Scott McPherson, and their sons, Clinton and Bo, are here with us to take part in this very special occasion. Ronnie was a very successful football coach and later an outstanding principal at Homer, High School in Claiborne Parish. He served this executive committee for seven years. During his tenure, he served in every capacity that a, an executive member could serve on, uh, culminating with his presidency. During his tenure on the committee, Ronnie never missed a meeting in the seven years that he was a member or any type of meeting or subcommittee meeting. And for Ronnie, this meant a 500 round trip mile trip 
every meeting. This was simply an example of the commitment he had for this organization. Ronnie's commitment to our student athletes was recognized this January when he was inducted into the prestigious Louisiana High School Coaches Association, Louisiana High School Athletic Association's Sports Hall of Fame. Louisiana High School Athletic Association's Commissioner Tommy Henry had this to say about Ronnie. In my 23 years with the LHSA, I do not know a single person that loved the LHSA and understood, respected, and appreciate, appreciated what the organization of the sports program of member schools involved more than Ronnie Beard. Ronnie was a special person whose loyalty and dedication to the Louisiana high school educational scene was characterized by his love and devotion to the LHSA sports in ways that have touched many lives. He established standards by his shining example for all of us in working for the best interests of our principals, athletic directors, coaches, and student athletes in the schools and their communities the LHSA serve. Tonight, at his favorite high school athletic event, the Superdome Classic, we especially miss Ronnie. We miss his presence, yet we know and are comforted and strengthened because we had the opportunity to know him, to work with him, and tonight to honor him. We know his spirit is here in the dome with us, now smiling down on the games being played in this classic. It is now my pleasure to introduce Ms. Evelyn Cruz Blanchard, who was an executive committee member who went on the board at the same time Ronnie did uh, to read the inscription on the plaque that would be presented to his family. 1998 Gatorade Superdome Classic, dedicated to the memory of Ronnie Beard, coach, principal, executive committee member, LHSAA president, and member of the LHSAA Hall of Fame. Some people come to our lives and leave quickly. Some people come into our lives and stay a while. And when they leave, we are never the same. Member of the West Monroe football team will now make the presentation also. And a member of the Ruston High School football team will make the presentation. Let's have a big round of applause for Miss Velda and her family here tonight. We would now ask that everyone stand for the playing of the national anthem to be performed by the West Monroe Marching Rebel Band under the direction of Dr. Mike Spears, Mr. Myron Turner, and Mr. Robert Freeman. Would both teams please return to their benches?
Your attention, please, with Steve Turner. Report to the media lounge, please. Steve Turner, report to the media lounge. Congratulations, been here. White captain, home team, blue, blue, blue captain. Yeah. Have a coin, heads, and a tail. You visit a call in the air, okay? Tails, it's a head. You've won the toss. You want to defer the second half. Your option is half. You want to receive the ball, which goal you wish to defend? Put your back to the goal you wish to defend. Let's be really wonderful. The time the option for the first half. A state championship is set to go with the wild card Rustin Bearcats riding a seven game winning streak challenging the West Monroe Rebels who are on a 36 game winning streak and looking to three peak as state champions. Rustin's last appearance in these state finals a successful one 1990 a 52 win 52 10 win over Catholic and of course West Monroe beating Bishop Shaw last year, 22-19 in a classic. Kickoff coming down to Rustin, who will operate with the ball to begin the contest. It'll be first and 10 for the Bearcat offense. Both these schools employing two quarterback offenses. It's a two quarterback split time. For the Bearcats, it's Hunter Smith and Jonathan Lyons. That's Smith, number 14, the senior. 6'1, 179. And he'll give to his tailback, Goldsmith. And he'll have tough running. 
over to left hand side. Brian West, the defensive end, making the stop. Third member of our broadcast crew is Sean Temple. He's down on the field, Sean. Well, this, this is a game definitely that marks a little history for West Monroe. They've been in the state finals two times in the past, uh, excuse me, three times. They'll make this their third championship in a row. For Ruston, they've been here a lot. This should be their ninth state championship. Back up to you guys. Thanks, Sean. Second and 10. Contact and Smith falls as he pulls out from the center. That'll bring up third down. You know, I guess the fans have to be cognizant of the fact that these teams did meet, as we talked about a little while ago. October 16th, uh, Rustin was, uh, was on the short end of a 42-6 lopsided win by West Monroe. And, you know, some other history here. Don Shows is an alumnus of Rustin High School. So I guess he's got uh, some mixed feelings, even though he's the head coach of West Monroe. Hunt splits out wide to the left. Smith absolutely nowhere to go. Penalty flags come down. Maybe a face mask. I'm not sure if it'll be enough for a first down, though. Brady James, the strong linebacker, pouring through. And it is a face mask. You talk about Coach Charles Renee, and of course, he was offered this rusted hit coaching position. This year, as you get a look at the face mask, decided he didn't want to relocate. Of course, there's been talks about him possibly retiring either this season or next. Rumors that he will either neither confirm or deny. And On a face mask, on a defense, 15 yards, it's still third down. Tommy Reeder was the offensive coordinator at Ruston at the time. Shouts recommended him for the job, and Reeder has been in coaching a long time at Haynesville through a couple of stints for 21 years, and now he's got his first head coaching job, and takes the Bearcats to the Dome in his first year as the head man. So it will be third down after the face mask call, third and seven. Ready? Goldsmith and Hunt behind Hunter Smith, the quarterback. To Goldsmith, he'll get across the 40. Close to the 41, but shy of the first down. James Rowland, the defensive tackle right there, and it'll be fourth down for the Bearcats. You know, something that you gotta talk think about is Goldsmith has busted some big time runs early in the game. He had a 65-yarder against Washita for a touchdown in the first quarter, and a 65-yarder for a touchdown against Airline as well. But the problem here is West Monroe doesn't give up many points. They've given up only 13 points in the second and third quarter combined this entire season. They don't relinquish many points. Josh Jerk in for the punt. There'll be flags on the play. Dead ball, delayed offense. They'll fall down. That'll back up the Bearcats five more yards. Of course, this is a similar situation. Punting early in the game that Rustin turned into pay dirt in the semifinal 6-3 win over Jesuit. When Jack Hunt in the blocking formation, number two right there in the middle of your screen, took the snap and ran it 35 yards for a touchdown. Here they're 65 yards from the end zone and will snap it back to Jerk who will kick it away to awaiting Marcus Turner. Ball will take a rust and bounce and will finally be down at the 23-yard line. A 42-yard kick by Jerk. You talk about Marcus Turner. He's got 1,728 all-purpose yards, 23.9 yards per grab. You know, last year they had the Smurf receivers. Every one of the receivers was 5'8 or 5'7. Marcus Turner is the only one remaining, 5'7", 137, but can turn the 40 and 4-3. Willis Britton, the single back. Behind Lane Laborde, and Turner gets the handoff. And he'll go around the right-hand side for a pickup of eight. Titus May making the stop, the defensive end. Titus May is southmore, pretty strong. 
really shuts the door on the outside here, but in motion, Turner gets the ball. You gotta be wary of him. He will turn it up 10, 500 meters, and wow, he can bust the game open. 16 touchdowns. You look at Don Shows. We talked about Rustin's two quarterback system. Wes Monroe's is Lane Laborde and Max Causey. Laborde number seven in there right now. Backs in an eye, Robinson behind Britton. And Laborde will hold on to it. He'll be very close to a first down. And he should have it. And it is a Rebel first down. The report runs that option pretty well. In fact, Max Causey is the better of the two throwing the ball, but Laborde is the senior. Max Causey also a senior. Laborde only six feet, 170, but with good, great awareness to, together they've combined for 2,600 yards and 27 scores. Laborde to Britain. And he'll pick up three. Willis goes down in the arms of Lester Jenkins, the senior defensive end. You know, if there's a mixed match of sorts, when you get a chance, number 89, the tight end for West Monroe is Andre Whitworth, 6'7", 280, only a sophomore, and he does catch the ball. He's got three grabs, and when he does catch it, he averages 31 yards per catch. I guess you'd call him a weapon. Also. As a side note, he's got an 80 mile an hour fastball in baseball. Not bad for a sophomore. West Monroe. West Monroe would like to talk about it. Facing his second and seven with 7-10 left here in the first quarter. No score here. We're just underway in the 5A state championship game of the Gatorade Superdome Classic. Second and seven. Laborde, toss sweep. Robinson, he's got some room. Look out. It's a foot race down the middle of the field. He's at the 10. Into the end zone for the touchdown. Kenny Robinson, five foot seven, the senior. A 63-yard touchdown run for Robinson. And obviously, West Monroe saw something and talked about it during the timeout that worked. Well, I tell you, a quick pitch here. Turn around. Good blocking on the outside. Kenny Robinson with that 4-5 speed. Lethal. Only 154, but he's lightning in a bottle. Good occupying block down the field. Really good by Brooks Greer. Allows him to get into the end zone and break this scoring drought. Alex Ayerdes' extra point is up and good. And boom, just like that, it's 7-0. West Monroe on top of Rustin. A four-play, 76-yard drive, taking but one minute and 59 seconds off the clock. Take another look at it, not even close, the seal blocking on the end, springing him and then as you mentioned, Renee, the excellent downfield blocking to occupy the defensive backs. And Robinson is not a stranger to the end zone. That's his 20th touchdown, John, of the 1998 season, the senior, Kenny Robinson. Well, Don Shiles has taken three previous teams here to the Louisiana Superdome, winning three times. And he says that this could possibly be his best team that he's brought here. Well, I talked to him before the game and said, Coach, I hope this isn't your last trip here. And he's smiling. I think he'll be back, Gerald. Kerry Goldsmith, strong kickoff return, bringing it back for Rustin, a 28-yard return. And the Bearcat offense will have another shot at it. He's a twin of Jerry Goldsmith. Kerry excels from his left cornerback position, also spends some time on offense, and back in the game is Hunter Smith. You mentioned Rustin's last trip, a 52-10 win over Catholic. That was back in 90. They also won in 88 over Shaw, 28-14, and 
An overtime win in 86 over Slidell, 31-24. Hunt, nowhere to go, stopped at the line of scrimmage. And one other Superdome winning appearance for Rustin in 1982, 8-0 win over Neville. Good luck there at Jack Hunt. He did, as you mentioned, score the only touchdown against Jesuit to get them here. He will be a big-time recruit in 1999, only a junior. Got 18 yards per catch, 570 yards rushing. The wing tee offense has Hunt running it again. Nowhere to go. Immediately knocked back by Josh Deason, the senior. Flies through the gap and knocks Hunt for a two-yard loss. That's a weight-trained athlete there, Josh Deason, with 14 sacks, the leader. Wow, that is forearm tackling. He's not going to go anywhere like that. Josh Deason, 5'10", 226, two-year starter, and the leading sacker, as we mentioned, with 14 tackles on the quarterback. 540 left here in the first quarter. Here comes West Monroe in the blitz. The flare out is incomplete, intended for Brian Ingram. He can't hang on to it. Even if he pulled it in, he was going to have tough hoeing to make it up the field. That'll bring up fourth down and Josh Jerg once again. Ingram with 19 grabs. He's, you know, you got to watch him on the corners. It's, it's a mismatch on the cornerback, but they were playing up pretty closely and anticipated something like that, so it wasn't a total surprise when when they tried the uh, pass to the corner. George, clean snap, good punt. Wow. High end over end punt, that'll drive Turner back to the 13. He'll bring it back, reversing his field. He's got some blocks. He'll be tripped up on a shoestring tackle. <laughs> Doc Heffler making the stop. 45-yard kick. One of the Bearcats is shaken up. He'll be attended to. Josh Harper, the injured Bearcat. As West Monroe takes over once again on offense, averaging a gaudy 46 points per game. 36 consecutive wins, as you mentioned, and going for their 10th state title. You know, they run the pro watch win set, no backs with a tight end trip. So, you know, you can't get a read on a West Monroe Rebel offense. And, you know, as dominant as West Monroe has been through Class 5A over the last three seasons, including this one, their trips to the Dome have all been close ones. A 22-19 went over Shaw in a game. The Eagles might have might have won last year, except for the fact that they turned the ball over late. The Rebels took advantage of it. They beat Karen Crow 24-21 here in 96 in their appearance in 94. Uh, excuse me, appearance in 93, a 28-21 win over Destrehan in Shao's first state championship. Max Causey, the second quarterback, after we saw Lane Laborde operate the last series is in, he'll drop back and pass, looking for Turner. It's a jump ball, looks like it was intercepted. Is that Goldsmith? Yes, it is. Goldsmith comes up with the interception on the first pass by Causey, and Rustin will have the ball in West Monroe territory. And that's Causey's fourth interception, a big 6'5 senior airs it out. Jerry Goldsmith playing defensive back where he'll probably play on the next level uh, with his another interception. And Goldsmith really plays that corner very, very exceptionally well, plays that press defense and tough to, to beat on a one-on-one -on -one situation. First and 10. Hunt around the left side. Dragging tacklers with him. Get up to the 38-yard line where he's finally hauled down. It'll be second down. You know, he runs the ball pretty well, but Coach Tom Reeder and his staff feel that Hunt may be the best blocker ever to play that position, that wing back position for Rustin. It has another year to go. Jack, uh, Jason Ledoux, who's committed to LSU, made the stop. He's the second leading tackle with 124 stops, along with six sacks, the 6'2", 224-pound senior, headed to Baton Rouge. 
Hunt again, left side. That's a big surge. He'll get down to about the 32-yard line. Jonathan Lyons in there at quarterback now, Renee. Checking in. We saw Hunter Smith in the first two series for Rustin. Now we see Lyons. Hey, Lyons is at, you know, he's a pretty good tosser. He's a baseball outfielder and a pitcher. He's uh, he's playing much, much better, the better passer of the two. Only a sophomore, but got a great future. 6'1", 161 pound prospect. Will be a top flight senior in the year 2000. Third down and two. Everybody in tight, Hunt in motion. Quarterback keeper, first down for Lions. Almost looked, looked like a busted play. I'm not sure if that one was designed that way or not, but Lions nonetheless picks up the first down. Uh, you know, in Rustin, they're running against a tough defense, and West Monroe will blitz. They blitz coming off the bus, though, every time. Uh, you know, they're, they're shooting shooting somebody from the corner or middle linebacker. Yes, and, and it looks like Lions made the most of that opportunity. Shows the maturity and uh, confidence he has in himself to not lose his cool under a busted play. First and ten, Lions wants the pass. Ball batted down at the line of scrimmage. He was looking for Josh Jerg, the tight end. Some of the Navy jerseys thwarted that one. We're going to be talking about some of the top flight recruits on both sides of the ball. Uh, one of them, Brian West, number 64, it would take too long to go into what he's accomplished and who's looking at him, but <clears throat> he'll be coming quite a bit right here. 64 puts a big paw up. He's got eight sacks on the season, 6'3", 245, 46, 640. Host of schools looking at him. Second down, toss sweep, Goldsmith, got some room. Will lower his head and get down to about the 23, and that'll set up a third down in about five. Brady James, the senior, right there for the stop after a six-yard gain. Michael Freeman helping out. And speaking of Brady James, he's the guy we focused on. A strong side linebacker, transferred from Wasman, right here. Look, number 10. He is the total package. 6'2", 225, 4, 5, 5, 40. Feel like he may be the best linebacker in the South. Leading tackler, 130 stops. And boy, I tell you what, he can wreak havoc. He gets, he moves around the field and arrives in a bad mood. Third and four. Lions looks to throw, tosses it complete. First down and more, still on his feet. Inside of the 10-yard line is Hunt. He'll get down to the eight. Though they'll say he stepped out of bounds at the 11. But he does have a first down. 12-yard pass from Lions to Hunt. Good little rollout action right here by Hunt. Finds his mark. Lions to Hunt, I'm sorry. Finds Hunt, who uses that uh, excellent size, 6'1", 190. Finally connects with uh, a collision with Chad Pitcher, who makes the stop the strong side. Safety for West Monroe. First down. Look out. Here comes Hunt running hard, looking for the goal line, and he's in there with the second effort, stretching out. What an outstanding effort that time by Jack Hunt. An 11-yard run, picks up a first down in the process, and sticks it in the end zone for the score, and it's 7-6. to six. What a great individual effort. He's got, uh, you know, 570 yards rushing. This is just one great individual. Broke two tackles, three, four, five, and he leans Puts that arm down. He's not down with that arm. Doesn't indicate he's down. Stretches the ball, breaks the plane. Touchdown. What is Rusted. Extra point attempt by Kenneth Seal is good. We're knotted up at seven with 234 left here in the first quarter of this 5A state finals in the Gatorade Superdome Classic. Touchdown run knots it all up. Caps a seven play, 41 yard drive. And Rustin is able to capitalize on the interception of West Monroe. End over end kick is bobbled right around the five yard line. Turner finally finds a handle and look out. He's got speed to burn and will take it outside. And he'll get drilled down after a 12 yard return up at the 17 yard line. Bradley Dean right there to make sure Turner could get no further. Good look at Bradley Dean, the cornerback senior. Right cornerback for the Rustin defense, and entering the field now is 
Lane Laborde. They rotate series, Laborde and Causey, and, uh, you know, Laborde with 48% of his tosses complete. Causey on the flip side, 61 success ratio in his passes. Britton and Robinson behind Laborde. Laborde will hand it to the deep back. That's Robinson. He's got nowhere to go. Big defensive play that time by Cornelius Lee. Lee, the 5'11", 220-pound senior, from his right down tackle spot making the play. And he uh, he brings it every game, every down, plays real hard. Not real big, but makes the most of what he's got. He's a leader on defense, kind of sets the tone for that defensive front. Second down and 11. Laborde beneath center. Calls for the football. Hands it off. Look out. Big hole. There goes Britton. Off to the races. Down the near sideline. Goldsmith giving chase. Britton hauled down at the five-yard line. Wow. Willis Britton. We've seen Turner's speed. We've seen Robinson's speed. Now we see Britton's speed on an 83-yard run. And as Britton, good belly right here, handoff to the first back group. He is skating down the field. What a run he made, not, uh, saving a touchdown as Goldsmith. We had that great acceleration, caught him at the five-yard line. 78-yard scamper by Britton gets uh, the West Monroe Rebels banging on the door, looking for their second score at the 125 mark here in the first stanza. First and goal. Britton and Robinson behind Laborde. They'll give it to Britton again. Excuse me, Laborde hung on to that one. And he lost a couple. It'll be second down. Corliss Scott from his middle linebacker position shooting through. Look, there is number nine, Robert Peace. We'll talk about him in a second. But Corliss Scott making the tackle from his middle linebacker spot, 5'11", 220 moves around, fills the holes, and has great awareness of where the ball is, as evidenced by the last tackle. Laborde keeps it, heads towards the end zone, in for the touchdown. Lane Laborde with the nine-yard touchdown run, and the Rebels have reclaimed the lead. He had the opportunity to option the ball back to Robinson, chose to keep it himself, and finds pay dirt. And Laborde running with the ball shows he's a dual threat. Two-point conversion is a fake. And it's no good as Causey has stopped. So we stay at 13-7 with 27 seconds left here in the first quarter. And West Monroe leading Rustin. This is the Class 5A Finals at the Gatorade Superdome Classic. Thirteen-seven, our count. Hey, the couple of times that West Monroe have scored have made it look awfully easy. Britain has a. 78-yard run to set up Laborde's nine-yard touchdown, and Robinson scampers 63 yards for a score for the Rebels. That was Laborde's seventh score on the ground this season. Knuckleball kick picked up by Kerry Goldsmith. He'll bounce it outside and gets sh get shellacked at the 30-yard line, a 17-yard return. Good look right there. Chad Pitcher, that's your quarterback next year for the 1999 West Monroe Rebels. He's playing strong safety, but he'll be under center next year to lead the troops and hopefully a trip back to the Superdome as far as Don Shiles and his staff are concerned. First and 10 with 18 seconds left here in the first quarter. From the 31, inside handoff, flags fly. 
Demario Cook with the ball. Motion the call against the Bearcats. You know, we're talking about Brian West a little while ago, number 64. Good looking at him right there. <clears throat> Brian West is a uh, unbelievable a good player. Not only does he excel in the football field. We have a motion on the offense. Still first down. His toughest decision may not be where he attends college, but if he chooses between baseball and football. As a 6'3", 245-pound prospect, not only can he hit the long ball, Gerald, he is a 92, right there, 92 mile per hour fastball, and he's being recruited by a host of big name colleges for football. Tough call for the young senior, Brian West. Handoff in a swarm of tacklers. Absolutely engulfing Cook. James Rowland, the first man there to make contact with the Rebels. They'll bring up the second down and a ton on the final play of the first quarter. The beehive activity right here as West Monroe just swarms the ball carry. And <laughs> first contact made by Rowland, but also assist made by Michael Freeman. We've played 12 minutes of ball here in the 5A state finals. It's a 13-7 West Monroe lead over Rustin. 5A state championship with the Gatorade Superdome Classic. Well, for Rustin to reverse the 42-6 loss it had earlier this year, Renee, it needs some fortunate breaks. It's gotten that with a turnover. It needs to take advantage of those breaks, which it has, with a touchdown. And it needs to move the football. Right here to second and 15. This will be a pivotal play to start the second quarter. Lions wants the pass, eludes one tackler, tosses it down the field, and it's intercepted. Jason Ledoux from his linebacker spot makes the interception. The ball will go back over to the West Monroe offense. And Jason Ledoux played D-line as a junior. He moved to middle linebacker. He'll be a linebacker in college at LSU, and good pressure applied by West Monroe and causes also coming up uh, Josh Deason forces a, a pass that uh, Ledoux comes up with, and West Monroe comes up with a possession of the ball. Good look at Jason Ledoux right there. Each team with a turnover. Causey looking to throw, overshoots Turner. Rustin able to take advantage of the West Monroe turnover. We'll see if the Rebels can do the same, returning the favor on the Bearcats turnover. Who can deliver? One guy right there, Rodney Reed, number 71, is also LSU bound, committed to the Tigers. He's 6'5", 261 pound senior, 4'7", 40, great feet, good drive blocker. Uh, he could probably, he's added 30 pounds since last year and probably add a few more when he gets to Tiger Town, but good lineman is a tackle, they'll move him inside when he gets to LSU. Hand off to Robinson, deep. And he'll skate up to the 20-yard line with a late flag coming streaming in. Bradley Dean was there for 23. Holding, Rebels. This will be coming back. Kenny Robinson. Got a holding on the offense, still second down. Kenny Robinson and Willis Britton both kind of have the same style of running. Kind of remind you of Eric Metcalf with that great explosion. Not real big, both about 155, 160. And uh, good toughness for little guys, not real big. Not, can't take the pounding inside, but they bounce it outside every opportunity and hit that crease pretty quick. Good looking, Don Schaus. Delay a game call against West Monroe. That'll back him up an additional five yards. That substitution on the offense. Still second down. 
Willis Britton, by the way, got pretty good grades, 3.3 grade point average, and among others, Harding University, NAIA school is looking at him as offer him a free ride. And boy, they'll surely miss those two, uh, Kenny Robinson and Willis Britton, when they graduate following the 1998 season. Blair into the backfield, that's Robinson. And he makes the most out of the effort, getting dropped down by Bradley Dean after a 10-yard pickup. That'll bring him back close to the original line of scrimmage. They like to isolate, and that's exactly what they're doing here on the corners. With Causey dropping back quickly, Causey, again, 61% of his tosses. This is a flip back, a lateral, if you will, and just isolate and let him do all the work, picking up his blocks, reading his blocks. Good block right there. Uh, allows him to scoot up the field and pick up a nice chunk of yardage, third and ten. Causey puts Turner in motion. Toss sweep, Robinson, look out. He's got some room, makes a cut at the 10, down to the six yard line. Here's Kenny Robinson. 21 yard pickup and the first down. It'll be first to goal. And I tell you, Robinson hits that line in a hurry. Yeah, he really does. Great explosion, four five speed. Good block downfield by Tremission Davis. Watching, you can see Josh Pate. Uh, and Sonia pulling out. Look right there. Davis with a good block down here allows him to get close to the goal. At first thing, goal banging on the door. Under 10 minutes. Rebels lead 13 to 7. Causey keeps the ball on the option. He's immediately stopped by Cornelius Scott shooting through his middle linebacker spot. And Corliss Scott shot the gap. Good stunt by Scott from his middle linebacker position. He was off at the snap of the ball and uh, with some assistance from Robert Pease to make sure that he went down. We look at Scott right there. Now on the outside. Hand off, first back through is Britton, senior fullback. Loses a couple. They'll bring up third down and goal. Tackle that time made by Robert Peace, and that's the son of uh, Joe Raymond Peace, former Louisiana Tech head coach. As a 13-year-old youngster, he used to work out with the Tech players. They call him Bad Dog, and watch him play. I think you'll know why. He's only a junior, but he's made his commitment. He wants to play with the Tigers of LSU when his high school days are over. Causey flips it back in trouble is Robinson trying to run out of it and he'll finally be snowed under by Cornelius Leo catch up Doc Hofler was right there as well Hefler almost stripped the ball and that was just sheer individual ability Kenny Robinson tried to make something out of nothing uh, his feet got well he really ran out of real estate and tried to cut it back and you really have to be confident in your speed to pull a play like this and almost pulled it off. 29-yard field goal attempt for Ayertis. And the kick is badly missing off to the left, so the Rustin defense holds after the interception. The Bearcats will have it first and 10 at their 20. Well, the Bearcats dodge a bullet, Gerald, and with 7.52 to go, held West Monroe out of the end zone and kept them scoreless this drive as, um, as Hunter Smith re-enters the game. Getting some hand signals from the coaching staff. But, uh, yeah, Rustin needs to put some kind of drive together with Goldsmith and company. And I can uh -huh. bet that they'll be throwing a little bit. Wing T don't throw that much, but uh, a pass now and then keeps the defense honest. Rustin takes the timeout. 7.52 left second quarter. 13-7 reps in the 5A state finals in the Gatorade Superdome Classic. Well, it took the Rebels eight plays to move 15 yards. They did it in just a hair under four minutes, and their 29-yard field goal is no good. Rustin will take over and move it back right to left. 
The first offensive carry coming to Demario Cook, the senior, 5'11", 190. Stopped by Brady James, number 10. And it'll be second down, second and about five. You know, Brady James is going to have a tough call to make. Uh, he's looking right now at Tennessee, Texas A&M, LSU, Florida, and Notre Dame. Uh, the look right there is at Brian West as well, another big-time recruit. But there he is, Brady James, prob probably the best, one of the best athletes in the state, if not the best linebacker for sure, maybe in the South. Once again is Cook, and he'll be very close to a first down. He may have it. James again on the stop. Cook gets out close to the 30. And you know, Brady James, his dad has had some health problems. Been very, he's very close to his dad, and that may have uh, a bearing on where he attends college. He doesn't want to go far from home, and uh, cares very much for his dad. And uh, that again may have a may have a bearing on his decision. You know, West Monroe is just so loaded with athletes. No matter, you, it's a tough. You know, exploit, you can't exploit them. There's just no weakness on this defense, and everywhere you look, there's a major college prospect. Just shy of the first down marker, third and less than a yard. Johnson, second effort, may have gotten it for him. Fullback Garrett Johnson coming through, and it looks on the initial spot that he has picked up the first down. And he has. Chains will move. You know, Garrick Johnson just putting his head down, 5'9", 201, runs into a wall. He's got 617 yards, and count that as 617 and a foot and a half. He didn't go very far, but he got the first down. Far enough to move those chains. Goldsmith coming back the other way. Tough running, gains maybe one. James rolling right there for the stop. You know, we talked about Brian West. He's been here so many times, this is a, a natural for him, and uh, he, we're going to take a look at Brady James in just a second, show you what kind of ability he has. There is Brady James, number 10, finding the ball, he's seeking missile, 4-5 speed, great awareness, good linebacker instincts, makes the stop. That's why so many colleges are really hot on his trail. Hunt sweeping back the other way. It'll be third and long for Ruston, third and about eight. We were talking about uh, Brian West, A&M, LSU, Miami, Florida, and Tennessee will all gain visits from him. You know, everywhere he goes, he's, he's been a, such a solid player his whole career here at uh, West Monroe. His motor never stops running, just an out, outstanding leader on this team and skates along the line of scrimmage. He had five sacks in one game in a playoff, three sacks against Catholic High, just dominates every game he's involved in. Number 64. Here comes the blitz. Pass down the field, incomplete. Smith was looking for McGeehee. Couldn't come up with it under a stiff West Monroe rush. Smith's second attempt without a completion. They were blitzing that play and just flushed him out of the pocket. Smith didn't have very very much of an option threw the ball away to get it away from a potential interception fourth down now a uh, long and punting situation and West Monroe may come up with a pretty fair field position low snap to Jerg picks it up end over and kick that'll be gathered in at the 34 initial hit as Hilton Hay gets past it excuse me Chad Pilcher gets past that initial hit and moves it up the field. And it'll get dropped short of the 40-yard line with a flag down. It will be clipping against West Monroe. West Monroe will. Got a clipping on the return, 15 yards from the spot of foul, first down. West Monroe so big up front. Reed goes 261, Pay 268, Grubbs at center 265. And the left side, Fleming guard 260, and Sonia, the baby in the bunch, 242 junior. But the left side, Fleming and Sonia will return for the 99 season. So a good starting point for next year. Hand off to the fullback, Britton. 
who earlier had the big run to set up the Rebels' second touchdown. This time, game's four, second and six. And they just pound, pound, pound away at you and hope you make a mistake, and then they break one with Britton or Robinson. They have the weapons to do that. Britton Agaudi, 85 yards rushing on only four carries, bolstered by a 78-yard run down to the Rustin five last quarter. Hand off, there he goes again. Look out, there goes Britton. Speed the burn, it's a foot race at the 20. He's going to waltz it into the end zone. Wow. Willis Britton shed the first tackle and goes 76 yards for the score. What happened that time, Gerald, is they caught Rustin in a blitz. There was a, a, a cavity, a vac and they vacated an area. Look, he just cut it back, and as uh, Jeremy Hamilton was trying to fill from the weak side, and they just caught him in a blitz, and Robert Peace is not going to catch him. They're going to bring it back. Shows what kind of speed Peace has as a big 6'3", 225-pound linebacker. I was in pursuit of Willis Britton. Flag on the play, and it will come back. We have a motion on the back. Five yards, repeat the down. Got motion against West Monroe, bringing it back. Boy, I tell you, a nice run. He would have been at the, uh, the double century mark before half with that run. Whoa, whoa. You see, they caught him in a blitz. But anyway, that was really close, and I guess Coach Shiles is not happy with that, as should be, I would think. West Monroe's got that big play offense. Renee, it really doesn't matter what point of the field they're on. Here they'll face a second down and 11 at their own 19 as the Rustin defense looks to clamp down. Play action pass, toss, well overthrown as Laborde was looking downfield. Goldsmith blitzing from the cornerback spot, hurried that throw up. Aiming for Turner, the 5'7 senior with outstanding speed. He's the go-to guy. 1,290 yards receiving. Good look right there at quarterback Lane Laborde. That'll bring up third down. Laborde beneath center. Keeps it, options it out. Robinson up to the 24-yard line. Goldsmith right there to drop him in his tracks. That'll bring up fourth down. Gary Goldsmith, who's getting some interest from Northwest and Northeast Louisiana, along with Robert Bad Dog Peace, combined on the stop. And now West Monroe in a punting situation, so that motion penalty really made a big, big difference, a seven-point swing here. Timeout, Justin. Timeout, Rustin with 3.13 in the second quarter as West Monroe sets up for its first punt. This is the 5A state championship at the Gatorade Superdome Classic. Taking the trip down from North Louisiana. 13-7, West Monroe. High snap, Lewis comes down with it. Gets a high kick. That'll be fair caught by Goldsmith at about the 47. Good field position for Rustin with 3.05 and one timeout here in the second quarter. Jerry Goldsmith will be playing defensive back right there, Don Shiles. Good look at him. Jerry Goldsmith will be uh, employing his ability at uh, defensive backfield in college, Southern Arkansas, Louisiana Tech, Northeast Louisiana, Northwest, Kentucky, and Tulane are among his suitors for the 5'10", 150-pound senior who was a 4'6", 40. Goldsmith looking for a crease, and the small crease that was there closes very quickly. Terrence Tarver right there, along with Brian West. Tarver is... Well, he crashes in from the outside, plays that defensive end expertly, 
good form tackle right here, and Arkansas is on his list of potential college colleges to attend. He'll play an outside linebacker in college, and with a 6'2", 234-pound frame and a 4'7", 40, he'll make an outstanding linebacker if he attends Razorback land. With three wide outs, Smith looks to pass and dumps it off short to his intended receiver, Brian Ingram. Would it be third down? Smith throwing his third incompletion, looking, dialing number one, Brian Ingram, who uh, stopped, ran that stop route and tried to come back, and just a too short of a route, uh, Hunter Smith was peeling back and just didn't have enough muster on his throw. Oh, with 2.24 left. The Rebels have two timeouts. If they can hold here, they can take the ball back over. Smith stands strong in the pocket. Jump ball down the field, tipped and incomplete. Pilcher was down there and breaks it up. Three Rebel defenders were down there. And it'll be fourth down. Pilcher coming up, kind of roaming that defensive secondary as the defensive quarterback before he flips sides over to offense in 99 and did a great job breaking up that ball. And now we'll call for a punting situation. The Bearcats will have to relinquish the ball on. George checks in for his fourth punt. Flags come streaming in. Looks like movement on the Bearcats offensive line. Got a dead ball. Far start on the offense. Still fourth down. Jerg's punt, high, Turner, fair catch, signal, and makes it. West Monroe will have another opportunity before halftime. West Monroe will take over once again at their own 18-yard line. And Rustin did a pretty good job except for that long run that was called back. They did hold uh, West Monroe with Max Causey at quarterback and forced, forced them to punt last series. Oh, what Rustin needs to do is hold on to the ball a little bit more, Renee. They only had the ball there for 57 seconds. Time of possession as Causey's pass for Turner is overthrown. They need to grind out a little more clock and keep it out of the hands of the high-powered West Monroe offense. That time, double coverage from Bradley Dean and strong safety Doc Hepler applied, kind of shut down Marcus Turner. Tough throw right here by Max Causey. You can see the strong safety coming over. He had beaten Bradley Dean. You just can't, you know, corral that kind of speed. Turner can kill you with that 4-3 speed. He's a burner. Look out on the draw, coming up is Robinson. He bounces to the outside. Goldsmith is out there and pulls him to the ground. Twenty-six yard pickup. Clock stopped with 151 left. With the movement of the chains. Well, they just like water bugs, both Robinson and Britton. They hit that hole pretty quickly, hit a cavity, breaks the tackle right there, and dances to the outside. Once he gets isolated, Goldsmith makes the stop, but not before. A nice pickup, chews up some valuable real estate for West Monroe. Causey feels some pressure, steps up, and is wrapped up and dropped. Cornelius Lee right there. Gets the sack. The blitz coming in from the corner. Force Causey to step up. And they'll shoot. Rustin will shoot some as well from the outside and the inside. We've seen Corliss Scott, the interior middle linebacker come on a couple of occasions and now you got Dean and Goldsmith will be shooting for the corners and that's the way you have to play this West Monroe you have to kind of catch him off guard and that worked that time Robinson again through the hole inside the 40 down to the 38 
101 left, clock will stop again. Jeremy Hamilton finally makes the stop and an 18 yard run. Now we see why it's so important for Rustin to hold on to the ball when they have it offensively. Giving it back to West Monroe with time. Timeout on the Time field. Out. West Monroe. West Monroe takes it. We'll take it as well. This is the Gatorade Superdome Classic. Ten for the Rebels down at the Bearcat 38. Robinson seven carries, 128. Causey wants to throw, pulls it down, can run and will. He'll pick up the first down and more down to the 27-yard line and gets out of bounds to stop the clock. An 11-yard pickup for senior quarterback Matt Causey. Matt Causey. Causey, excuse me, Renee. Excuse me, Causey is uh, being watched by Magnese, Louisiana Tech, Northeast and Northwest Louisiana. It pulls it down, good decision here, 6'5", 180. He'll fill out to about 210 or 215. But good awareness of where he is and where he needs to be. Picks up the first down at the 27-yard line and keeps the drive going. Good look at the big senior, Max Causey. Turner in motion. Causey drops straight back, sets up in the pocket, feels some pressure. Rolls out of that, looks down the field, scrambles out of it, and throws the ball away. Intended for Brooks Greer. Jeremy Hamilton in hot pursuit. Putting the pressure on Causey. It's a little uh, chewing out, if you will, from Don Schaus. Hamilton comes from the outside, blitzing the south board. Great speed, puts a little pressure and maybe alters Max Causey's decision. You see he's feeling a little pressure there from Lester Jenkins. Overshoots his target, incomplete, stops the clock. 43 ticks to go. And West Monroe still nursing that six point advantage, 13 to six. Rebels up 13-7 on second and 10. Causey looks the pass, drops, looks over the middle, contact and a flag comes in. Once again, looking for Brooks Greer. And as expected, the penalty against Rustin. Looked like Hepler may have made contact, and Greer running that post pattern, and Causey just lays it up right in the middle. Hepler interfered with him, and the... the Junior Greer is going to enable West Monroe to have a first down. On the defense, first down. They'll make a throw like that to Greer on occasion. They feel like he catches the ball best among their receivers in traffic. He's fearless. Great explosion to the ball, 4-5. And he will go up and take it away from you, only 5-10, but he is fearless. First and 10. Causey looks for his tight end, Whitworth. It's broken up by Hamilton. That's like throwing to the Empire State Building. 6'7", 280. He has no business running routes. Uh, Look at him stand next to Robinson. Shadow in Robinson. 6'7", 280, a sophomore. Got three catches, 31 yards per catch. And uh, he make it bigger, make it better, but I hope he doesn't get bigger. On second down, here comes the blitz. It's not picked up and shooting through. Doc Hepler and Corliss Scott making the stop. Timeout, West Monroe. West Monroe takes the timeout. Their final with 26 seconds left in the second quarter here at this 5A state finals of the Gatorade Superdome Classic. Going to pick up some points right before halftime with 26 seconds left. They've got time to run the ball and get back to the line of scrimmage, but then they would potentially face a fourth down conversion. They can pick up a first down without scoring. 
Causey looks to throw, flares it out, complete on the side, but stopped short of the first down marker. That was Termission Davis. And the clock will continue to roll. West Monroe out of timeouts. They can't just down the ball. They're going to have to run a play here. Down. Unless they get the first down. Feeling some pressure. The ball flared out. Look out. Looking for the end zone on the second effort and finding it. What an outstanding play by Kenny Robinson. He was wrapped up in the backfield and stopped. The half had expired, and Robinson picks up a touchdown right before halftime. That's a big one on the fourth down play. Wow, and credit Max Causey. Look, he was being hit as he threw. Kept the uh, kept his uh, senses about him and, and hit Robinson on the outside. Robinson with unbelievable strength for a 154-pound tailback. Loses the shoe. Over the goal, breaks the plane. Touchdown, and West Monroe will be going for a deuce. Lost the shoe there. Renee made it in the end zone with only one cleat on. No, one shoe on. Well, oh, one shoe. Sock on the other foot. Great play. Leading 19-7, the Rebels will go for two. And flags come down. R Rusted really, as they got to be Delayed. deflated. Offense. Repeat the try. They have to be deflated because Five. they had held him until the last play and could not secure the tackle. He would have looked a lot nicer going into the halftime break at 13-6. Now they're looking at potentially being down by 14. 13-7 at halftime. 13-7, I'm sorry, 13-7. And, and uh, the effort was certainly there. Rustin just could not make the tackle. And Robinson gets into the end zone and shows, encourages his troops as there's the... Kenny Robinson, who scored that last touchdown for the Rebels. Now they'll check in for the field goal, or for the extra point attempt. They'll kick it, as they showed run before. Now Yardis. And more flags come down. Delay on the offense. Two okay. delays being called against West Monroe as they're trying to convert this point after the touchdown. Now we'll try it again. It ends up being a 30-yard extra point. Out of the hold of Causey. And it's short. So the two delays hurt West Monroe, but not before the Rebels could punch another score on the board. 19-7 as we go to the intermission. West Monroe will have the ball to begin the second half as well. One more look at the touchdown. Wow, what an individual effort. Broke three tackles, fourth right here. Pulls him into the end zone, broke the plane. It was a fumble, but the ground caused the fumble. Touchdown. Let's send it down to the field for our halftime entertainment. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the halftime festivities of the... Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the halftime festivities of the 5A State Championship. The award-winning Ruston High School Band and Spirit Groups will present music and visual designs. The band is under the field direction of drum majors Anthony Jackson and Rachel Sirio. Performing first are the 1998 Ruston High School Bearcat Bells. Captain is Shelley Johnston. Co-captain is Lori Lutz. Junior co-captain is Leah Colvin. The Bells perform to bang on the drum all day.
Ruston High School, Bearcat Bell. Now the Ruston High School band performing 20th Century Fox Fanfare and Chuck Maggioni's Children of Sanchez featuring Vinnie Kalita, trumpet soloist. section is featured next as the band spells out cats on the field. Okay, Bearcat fans, get off your seat, get on your feet for the Ruston High School fight song. The Ruston High School Band is under the field direction of Mr. Dennis Hensley, assisted by Mr. Walter Moss, real design and percussion instructor. Bells and Pepe's sponsor is Ms. Lloyd Phillips. Thank you for your kind attention. Joy Hurd, Jessica Ivey, and Brent Armstrong. Flag captains are Amanda Langston and Tanya Dooley. Drumline instructor is John Bingaman. Drumline captain is Stephen Kadar. Tonight's Superdome show begins with the contemporary Christian hit, I Am. Soloists are Trent Bratton, Paul S. Musen, Philip Joffreon, and Pete Thompson.
In the back of the program, and also they have Alta Palm at gates A, C, and G. In the event anyone needs to purchase a souvenir Gatorade T-shirt, Alta Palm are in the program. 
and they are also at gates A, C, and G. If anyone wishes to purchase a Gatorade Superdome t-shirt. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, the LHSA has a presentation to make. Each year, we have the Gatorade Superdome Classic official poster contest. Some 500 kids from around the state participate in the poster design contest. The poster design contest is sponsored by Lundy Enterprise, your New Orleans area pizza hut. The LHSA is proud to have Pizza Hut and its long-standing relationship with the LHSA in sponsoring this program. The 1998 winner was Mr. Charles Butler, a sophomore at Hornville High School, who designed the winning poster. Receiving the award tonight, the framed copy of his poster is the principal of Hornville High School, Mr. Bobby Stevenson, and the art director, Mr. Lloyd Sinsat. Presenting them the poster is Mr. Rocky Zaccarella, director of operations for Lundy Enterprise. Charles Butler will also receive a $100 check from the Louisiana High School Athletic Association. Now, Mr. Al Montgomery, principal of Grace King High School and representative on the LHSA committee as past president will present Lundy Enterprises with a framed copy in appreciation of their sponsorship of this program. Let's have a big round of applause for the 1998 winner, Mr. Charles Butler, and also thanks to Lundy Enterprise. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a special treat for you also. We have representatives of the 1998 Hall of Fame inductees. This ceremony took place last January in Baton Rouge, and we would like to recognize those in attendance tonight. First of all, Mr. C.J. Alexander. We would also next recognize Mr. Ronnie Beard, recognizing Ms. Nell DeBeard in his honor. Our next Hall of Fame inductee, Mr. Ray Gambino. Also inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1998, Ms. Barbara McManus. And our final 1998 Hall of Fame inductee, Coach Jerry Stovall. Let's have a big round of applause for the LHSAA, LHSCA Hall of Fame inductee for 1998. Congratulations.
J.P. Fitzmaurice kicking off. Third quarter begins with West Monroe returning the kickoff. Rebels will take it over after the 12-yard return. First and 10 up at the 26-yard line. And I'm sure a topic of conversation at halftime was the touchdown Rustin surrendered. As they went to the locker room, they trail now. 19-7 instead of 13-7. Yeah, and in fact, that Max Causey was speculating he may just down it, and he made something happen. He made chicken salad, and you know the saying on the last play of the game. What is that saying? I have that one I don't know. Laborde in at quarterback. He'll give it to Britton. Britton surges a hit. Ronald Hale will haul him down. After a pickup of four, it'll be second and six. Lopsided stats for halftime. Tom Reeder looks on. 21 yards gained in the first half. Rushing for Rustin. 237 for the Rebels. Laborde holds on to the ball. Loses his footing right before the 40-yard line. Kerry Goldsmith was out there, but it was for Laborde unable to cut. However, he does move the chains. First down, West Monroe. West Monroe is flagged with seven penalties for 50 yards. Rustin, four for 30. Another look at that play just now as Laborde with his 4-6-5 speed hits the corner. Quarterback shoots outside, which is the right way to play. And Pat Turfsley got a hold of him and with the assistance of Goldsmith makes the tackle. Laborde again. Flag comes down, the board is off to the races. Bean trailed from behind, he'll stop and reverse his field, and Goldsmith catches up to him and finally drops him. That was a 37-yard run, but this one may be coming back. And Rodney Reed, the commitment to LSU is on the field. They're assisting to him, and it may be coming back, it will be coming back. Displeasure voiced by the Rebels' sideline, and as Rodney Reed looks like he's in some pain. Reed injured, down at about the 45-yard line. Timeout. Injury timeout on the field as they will attend to it. Reed gets up on his own feet. He'll come to the sideline. Sean Temple down on the field brings us up to date, Sean. I talked to some of the guys on the Rustin team, and they said Coach Reeder said, you've got to do the basic things to win, guys. Stop tackling with your arms. Start coming off the ball on both the offensive and the defensive line and start making your blocking schemes. You do all these things right, and we're winning the game, not losing it 19-7. to Word to the wise for the Rustin team. Back up to you guys. Thanks, Sean. That's what you have to do when you trail. You just play the game like it's 0-0 as you come out in the second half to like your defense. To stop the Rebels here, you get a break on a big penalty. And a blitz. Wow. Bottles up the running attack right there on first down. On a safety blitz, Hepler came from nowhere and made the stop along with Robert Peace. Good look at Peace right there. That guy, he's causing some serious fumbles, but just great timing right here by Doc Epler, the senior, 5'10", 155, shot the gap at the right time and found the right crease to hit. Second and long. Pass. Turner's got it. Look out, racing down the sidelines. He'll pick up the first down. Peace pushes him out of bounds down at the 45-yard line. An 18-yard pickup. Turner picking up the majority of that on his own. Quick hitter by Laborde over to Turner. Steps out of a tackle here, and here comes Peace to shove him out of bounds, and that's no easy task for the 6'3", 225-pound outside linebacker. First down on the pickup. 
Double wide outs to the top of the screen. Delayed handoff on the draw. And Robinson is upended. It goes down hard at about the 38-yard line. Corliss Scott making that stop after that six-yard carry. Corliss filling in from his middle linebacker position. You see him coming right at you right here. Robinson, good block on Peace, applied by Ben Sonier. Second and short. Strength of the formation to the near side. Rustin on the blitz. Once again, Robinson will pick up the first down. Kepler making the tackle after the 10-yard gain. And Robinson is mounting up the yards. Good pull block and uh, allows Robinson to get outside. Good look by, good block by Lance Wright. Big offensive guard. Robinson up to 141 yards. And here he'll go again. He'll pick up seven more. Down to the 26-yard line. Titus made a stop from his outside or defensive end spot. Good look at big number 89. Mammoth, 6'7", 280, tight end for the Rebels. Only a 10th grader will be back a couple of more times. Hopefully he'll make the trip back to the Superdome for the Rebels' sake. But a well-oiled machine, these... West Monroe Rebels have, Gerald. Well, the offensive line really taking charge here in the third quarter, Renee. They're coming off the ball well. Once again, Robinson, far side, flag goes streaming down. Robinson pushed out of bounds. That could be a clip against West Monroe. And it is. Four or five speed is lethal. But look at this. This is Barry Sanders type move. Right, right at full speed makes that cut. You know, he's a little faster, actually faster than the four or five because of the cuts he can make at full Not speed. And attempted block by David Toler. No Perhaps they've got a helmet behind him. Rebels have been flagged nine times for 75 yards. Here it'll be second down and 18. Turner, complete. He's got some room, and he's got moves. Wrestled out of bounds, uh, should say wrestled down at the 26-yard line. Jerry Goldsmith stands his ground and finally drops him, but not before Turner picks up 15 off the pass from the board. Just isolating Turner on the quarterback. Catches it right here, and Goldsmith will come up to make the stop. Boy, you really have to break down here to make this tackle. He puts the move on you, and there's no one behind you to make the stop. It's touchdown bound, and so you have to make sure a tackle is made when you isolate and get one-on-one -on -one with Turner. Third and two. Robinson on the option. Excellent defensive play that time by Bradley Dean, flying up from the cornerback spot. The drop Robinson for a loss. You don't see that happen often. It'll be fourth down at about five. Why you stop that is you have to come up before the play actually develops. You can't wait till he has the ball and has all this room to maneuver. Look, he's coming up. He is coming up as the ball is pitched. That's the only way you're going to stop him. You have to kind of sell out and, and commit that you're going to try to make the tackle in the backfield. If you wait, you also may either get blocked or he's going to fake you out. There's no way one-on-one -on -one you're going to tackle him. The Rebels, one-on-one on fourth down conversions this game. Fumbled snap, and that'll end this drive. Ball goes over on downs. Britton recovers it, but it really doesn't matter because Rustin holds. Just a bad exchange. 
Looking at Rodney Reed down there. Rodney Reed, uh, number 71, offensive lineman for West Monroe, had a dislocated shoulder earlier in the game. They popped his shoulder back into place, and right now he's questionable to go back in. I'd say he eats nails for breakfast. Yeah. I tell you, if I got a hangnail, I wouldn't be up here in the broadcast booth. If my shoulder was separate, I wouldn't be calling the game with you right now. Johnson on that carry, straight ahead. That last drive, Renee, for West Monroe, almost six minutes, almost half of the third quarter. Whoa, might have got a little bit of a face mask right there. Uh, it was close, but might have maybe perhaps a shoulder pad. Good look right here at Hunter Smith. Orchestrating a drive right here with five minutes and change counting. Gold Smith the other way. Wrapped up at the 40. He'll lose the yard. It'll be a big third down for Rustin as they look to break up. Break out here in the second half and cut into the 19-7 West Monroe lead. Look at West right there, Brian West. They say he's in the same mold. Don Shaw says he's in the same mold of a Michael Brooks and an Oliver Lawrence. He's coached with or against those two young men. Brian West again, A&M, LSU, Miami, Florida, and Tennessee will gain visits from him. Whoever gains his services make it a two-sport performer. So baseball may play a role since he wants to play both in college. And off to Johnson, nowhere to go. Wrapped up and driven backwards. Terrence Tarver, the first one there. That'll bring up fourth down. And just slams right into Tarver. 6'2", 234 pound defensive end. Stands him up and gets help from the troops arrive. And uh, just snuffs out that play right there. And again, Tarver capable of playing on the next level. Arkansas is among the, the suitors, and he just really outstanding player, all district performer, three-year starter for the Rebels. Lives to play football for West Monroe. Jerg with his fifth punt of the evening. It's a high one. And Turner will allow it to bounce. Takes a big Rebel bounce forward, and it's finally down. 24-yard effort from Jerg. The jury's a pretty good baseball player himself, all district performer for the Ruston baseball team in the spring. A lot of good athletes on both sides of the ball here. Well, West, West Monroe and their full contingent. A lot of young players dressing out with the experience of a lifetime championship game right here in the Louisiana Superdome. Max Causey checks in at quarterback. Drops back, feels some pressure, makes a move. Rustin's there, ball comes loose. Back at the 28. Let's see who comes up with it. Rustin does. Lester Jenkins, the defensive end, 6'4", 230. The senior comes up with the ball, and this is a similar situation Rustin was able to capitalize on earlier, an interception at the West Monroe 40. Led to a Jack Hunt 11-yard touchdown back in the first quarter. Now this turnover at the 28. We'll see if the Bearcats can convert. And Lester Jenkins comes up with it. Big defensive end, 6'4", 250. Big play for Rustin. See if they can capitalize on this opportunity. Pass is complete as Lyons finds Jerg his tight end. He'll bring it down inside the 15. Down to the 13, an 18-yard completion. If the lame Lyons rings a bell for Louisiana fans, Paul Lyons, LSU QB from back in the 70s, is his dad. So he's got some pretty good bloodlines. I'm sure Papa Paul is up in the stands right now watching the Bearcats, and most notably his son, Jonathan, perform Sally here for Rustin. First and ten, Lions beneath center. We'll hand it off. Goldsmith sweeping right. Got a crease. Still on his feet. Right down to the goal line. The ball comes loose. Let's see who's got it. Right at the goal line. West Monroe retains possession and picks up. Excuse me. Rustin retains possession and picks up the first down. Wow. 
It'll be first and goal from inside the one. That could have been a disaster. Great run, individual effort by Goldsmith. Twisting, churning, relentless, wouldn't give up. Uh, almost was separated from the ball. Watch Goldsmith skirting right side, breaking a tackle right there by Freeman. Was hammered as he approached the goal line, and luckily for the Bearcats, they retained possession. Hand off, punt. Will not get in. Denied. Brady James right there. You can see why Brady James services are so coveted as he filled from his strong linebacker position and just hammered Timeout. the punt. Tom out for the Bearcats. They'd like to talk about it on second and goal. We'll take the break as well here in the third quarter. It's 19-7, West Monroe, this 5A state finals of the game. Offense looking to stick it in the end zone, taking advantage of the second West Monroe turnover. Lions, full house backfield. Goldsmith dropped in the backfield. Guess who? Brian West. Big Brian West, he's so agile and athletic, he just shot right past a pretty fair athlete on his own right, Robert Peace. On the ground, made the tackle. Big Brian West, 6'3", 245, and wow. What great athletic abilities he possesses. Third down. Punt, hammering, into the end zone for the touchdown. On third and goal, Hunt sticks it in. And at 19-13, with the extra point to come, we've got a ball game. And here in the third quarter, makes you wonder, too, if Rustin was able to hold right before halftime, where it would be. And Hunt just leans forward and gets in with Brady James on his back, among others. What a powerful run that was. And they gave it to the right player. Hunt with the score. Kenneth Seal in for the extra point. It's up. It's good. Five-point game, 19-14, West Monroe on top of Rustin. 2.25 left here in the third quarter of this 5A state finals, the Gatorade Superdome Classic. Rustin has taken full advantage of the two West Monroe turnovers. High sky kick will be taken in at the 15. Look out. Here comes Robinson. Got a block in front of him. He'll get across the 30. Up to the 33-yard line, a 17-yard kickoff return. Well, for Rustin to pull this game out, West Monroe will either have to get make some more mistakes, turning the ball over, or the Bearcats will have to mount some offense. They only had 30 yards in the first half. They may have to have a traditional drive after a punt or a kickoff and score that way. He panned off Robinson, skirting on the outside. The Rustin defense, led by Peace, is right there. Peace coming from the backside, making the stop. He goes down with a cramp getting worked on. He's gaining some assistance from his teammate, Doc Hepler. It's only fitting someone named Doc should be the first one on the scene to help out. <laughs> you know, I hate to laugh at anything like that, but Tom Reeder showing some concern. What a great story to take over a program in your first year. Of course, just off the top of my head, the last guy to take over a program and bring it to the Dome in his first year coaching, particularly in 5A, Scott Hildebrand. Yes. Bringing Hornville here to the Dome. It wasn't a losing effort that year. If I'm not mistaken, that was Washita.
Neville, 35-7. That was in 95. Hornville beating Washita, 36-28 in 94. And Reader, of course, a 21-year assistant in Haynesville under Red Franklin, has been to the Dome a number of times, and uh, you know, he shared some stories, uh, some experiences. Nothing like a trip to the Dome, and coming back the second time, you know, you when you revisit, having been, been through all the hoopla, it's been like the Super Bowl. All right, so so much distractions before you even arrive with ticket requesting, fans, and so many things of that sort. It's really media request. Don't forget that. Yeah. Well, as far as the team distractions, it's it's a lot. It's like this, very much like a Super Bowl. Second and nine. Play action. Labord looks the pass complete on the play, finding Tremission Davis down the field for the first down, and the sticks will move for the Rebels. 18-yard pickup on the play. And Lane Labord on a on a line here. Good protection of the pocket. Look at this. No one's even. Now, just before his release, he's, he feels some pressure, but Davis with the grab on the sidelines and Heffler with the stop. First down, 141 remaining in the third stanza. First and 10. Laborde wants to pass again, looks down the field for Turner. Did he catch it? No, they'll say out of bounds. What a grab. Goldsmith was in the wake of Turner. Turner just could not come down with it in bounds. He's got good separation speed. 4-3, look, he just separates from Goldsmith, and you just can't keep it with this out. First step was outside, and he come down with his left foot. It would have been a fair catch, a good catch, but he just separated from Goldsmith, and 4-3 against 4-6 had some sprinters, but the three-tenths of a speed will burn you. Second and 10. Play action, feeling some pressure. Laborde will roll, look to pass, complete on the play. Inside the 30, making a cut and falling down is David Toller, the senior. 22-yard pass completion. It looks like Goldsmith, that would be a big loss for Rustin, is down on the field. Also limping off is Laborde, the quarterback. This game turning physical here in the third quarter. There's Goldsmith. And here's Laborde as he tried to throw it. You can't see where he got hurt, but as uh, Toller gathered it in and cut across the field, I think his own player may have just chopped him right there as he was rolling down. It may have been Contact with Bradley Dean as he gets gained support from his twin brother, Kerry Goldsmith. Oh, West, West Monroe moving the ball right now, trying to answer the touchdown drive of Rustin. Laborde has moved the team well as he is four or five for 73 yards all this half. And as you're talking about injured players, I'm observing Rodney Reed at number 71 who left the game with a, a uh, separated shoulder for the second time. He's gaining assistance from his teammates to buckle his helmet so he can go back in the game. He's going to try to play, and he had trouble buckling his chin strap. Dislocated shoulder, and he's going to try. He's holding his arm pretty stiff, but good look at Lane Laborde, and yes, sprained ankle. He'll try to suck it up. There's no tomorrow for these teams. He's trying to come in, Renee. Now he'll bring him back towards the bench. Causey replaces Laborde. Hand off, Robinson, deep. Squirting through, getting down to the 17-yard line. Stop by Peace. Bad dog corrals him right there. You can see him. Well, he'll be back next year. 4-5, 940, 6 3, 225. Outside linebacker. He'll grow a little bit. Maybe about may dress out to about 240 by the time the senior year arrives. 
But boy, I tell you, being a coach's son, I'm sure he's seen it all. And Joe Raymond Peace is very proud of Robert Mad Dog. Second and two. Here comes the blitz. Look out. Under pressure. Complete. Down to the 10. And a first down for Tolar. Tolar losing a shoe. Laborde back into the game. And Rodney Reed, both of them. We'll see if we can't get a shot of big Rodney Reed, number 71. There he is. Right at the left tackle spot. Hand off. First man through is Britton. We'll make it down to the eight. Rustin can pick up a first down before they score. And that is the end of three quarters of play. 19-14. West Monroe has the lead and is looking for more. This is the 5A state championship in the Gatorade Superdome Classic. West Monroe's multi-dimensional offense on the ground. Robinson 12 rushes, 157 yards. Britton seven carries for 94 yards. Laborde's added 73 through the air. That's accounted for a 19-14 West Monroe lead. It'll be second down for Laborde and company on the seven. Expect Jerry Goldsmith to return to the game. Angle injury. He'll suck it up and put some tape on and come back in. The board gives it to Britton. Straight through. Plowing over the left side. He'll make it down to about the three-yard line. It'll be second down. Check it, third down. Third down and less than a yard from the two. The board. On a sprained ankle. That's blood and guts there, buddy. 11-19 to go, and West Monroe looking to salt it away. Now with an 11-point advantage. Good faking right here. Or the belly fake, and just takes it inside. Collision with Jeremy Hamilton, but the damage had already been done. And leading 25-14, West Monroe time out. take West a Monroe. time out to talk about it. 11-19 left here in this fourth quarter of this 5A state finals. Answers the Rustin touchdown after the West Monroe fumble and puts the Rebels back on top by two scores. They'll go for two here, try to increase their advantage. Robinson fighting through one tackle, but a sea of white to keep him out of the end zone. Two-point conversion, no good. So the spread in this game remains 11, 25-14. Through three quarters, West Monroe, 383 yards of total offense. The Rustins, 80 yards, but the score was 19-14 at that time. West Monroe leading. Time of possession, 20 minutes, 6 seconds to 15, 54. Uh, West Monroe holding a slight edge there and a slight lead here. Just 11-point lead, but it's going to call for two scores to get back in this game. And this has become a game, before I tell you what, that last score at the end of the first half has become monumental. Who knows what kind of game would have added and not been that score, but they do, and they get along with it.
Yardis' kick will come down. Goldsmith back in the game will return it. Across the 15, up to about the 20. It'll be drilled down there. 15-yard return. The Bearcat offense will get another shot. 11.09 left in this final quarter. See if West Monroe's defense can stiffen up a little bit. With the Rustin offense back on the field. Hoping to muster up some drive here and put something together here in the third or fourth period. Hand off to Cook. And Cook will get dropped in the backfield for a loss. Deason with a good tackle, Josh Deason. Undersized, 5'10", 226, but don't tell him that. He's weight trained and just has a nose for the ball. Just loves to play quick off the ball. Makes the most of his talent as well. As what high school football is all about. Hunter Smith beneath the center. Loses the ball. Almost looked like a shuffle pass there. Flags on the play also. Dead ball, ball start on the offense. Three second down. That'll repeat the second down. It's a tough defense to run against right there. You see number 64, Brian West. And to his left, he had Josh Deason and Brady James in company number 10. So now it'll be second down and 16. Lions in the game. Pass is complete, but immediately wrapped up. Holloman's first catch on the stop. Chess Hill, the cornerback. Chess Hill coming up on the break, makes the stop. Good cover, guys. Senior makes the stop. Third down, one for six. And convergence. Lions gets it off the hunt. He's got some blocks. Look out. He's got the first down and more across the 40 up to the 45. And Lions is very slow to get up, taking a big shot. By Brady James. Well, he read the blitz that time and burned them with Hunt on a crashing pattern. A little, little screen type play here. Look right across the as he crosses and scoots up the field. Nice pick up, 4 6 40. And they just sold out with everybody coming on a blitz. And Hunt almost made a pay for it. Cook. Running the opposite way, gets into Rebel territory, down to about the 48. Good look at Mario Cook right there, who 5'11", 190 senior. Second and seven. Hunt sweeps left. Hit once, still running, still going. I think he may have come up with the first down. The official saying he was down. Wow. Back at the 46, and I think Hunt was still in forward motion. Coach Tommy Reeder and company arguing that Hunt was still in forward progress. And you see his entourage leading him. Wow, he kept on going. His feet never stopped. I'll tell you, that was a bad call. Clearly, he was not stopped. There may have been an inadvertent whistle, but instead of a first down, it'll be third and four. Hunt 
play action pass being pursued. Ball comes loose, but they'll say an incomplete pass. Hunter Smith took a shot from the blind side and nearly gave up the ball as Riddell Williams came all out here from his linebacker position. He's a former tailback, so he's got some foot speed. Wow, and that was close. That was very close. It'd have been tough to argue had he called it a fumble. Breedell Williams, you look at him right there. Three-year starter, but as we mentioned, he was a former tailback in 97. Best athlete on defense, if you can believe that. Watch With the great fake. Games in West. Excuse me, Renee. Watch the fake here. They'll shift out of the punt formation. And Jerg will look to pass. He'll run it. Need some help. Won't get it. He'll be short of the first down. The Rebels hold on defense. Virgin whistle may have been very costly to the Rustin Bearcats. Can't take it back, but we'll see what happens if the defense can suck it up and make something happen here. Coach Tom Reeder is trying to deal with the cards that were dealt him. The board back in after that injured ankle he suffered the last series. Delayed handoff, Robinson in the backfield. Wrapped up at the 48. Jenkins and Lee both there. They'll bring him down. Cornelius Lee very slow to get up. He'll come to the sideline. It'll be second down and about eight for West Monroe. 7.46 left here in the fourth quarter. 25-14. West Monroe has been in control of this game, but Rustin has made the most of its opportunities. Playing much better this week, I might add, than it did last week in its semifinal win over Jesuit. Robinson. Turner, excuse me, on the pitch. Will crack the 50 and get it down to the 49. It'll be a third down for the Rebels. Hamilton applies the brakes to Turner. And Turner is that lightning in a bottle. You gotta watch him when he gets his hands on the ball. He's coming back on the reverse. Takes it from Laborde and skirts around the left side. Gets a little pickup block from Whitworth. Springs him in. It's Rodney Reed, injured shoulder and all, coming out trying to help. Robinson in Britain. Pitch Robinson. Oh. And he's knocked down hard at the 45. Scott. Corliss Scott tattoos him, but not before. Robinson picks up a first down. Watch. Corliss Scott is going to blow him up right here. He takes the pitch. He makes one to me cuts right here, and bang. You can hear that from up here. What a collision as Corliss Scott just blew him up. That puts Robinson at 165 on 16 carries. His 17th, he's got plenty of green grass in front of him, and Goldsmith, an excellent open field tackle, will wrap him up after a 15-yard carry. Robinson's quickly getting close to the 200-yard mark. Good block by Tremission Davis on the corner, which allowed him a lane to run in. And uh, that's not an easy block to make. You'll see number eight on the outside, Tremission Davis. Watch as he cuts off his block right. Can't see it, but it was a good block. Allowed him to, allowed him that lane to cut up the field. And good block right, the good tackle there to bring him to the ground. On the move, Laborde has the Rebels. And a first and ten situation at the Bearcat 30. First back through is Britton, the fullback. He'll dive down. Peace making the stop.
That puts Britton over to century mark on that carry. 103 on the afternoon. The tackle by Bad Dog Peace. And they're just really just going to hammer away at that rusted defense and sort of soften a little bit. Mix up in the backfield. You can credit Doc Hepler getting back there, disrupting the flow of that play. It'll be a short gain. Third and five. It, yeah, it gets, you know, Hepler really did a great job just tackling the quarterback and disrupting the play before it ever developed, before it ever got started. Hepler shooting it from a safety position is really doing a good job. 5'10", 155, senior, very smart, very intelligent, recognized as well. On that third down carry, Jenkins wrapping up Britton. Shy of the first down. It'll be fourth down. I'm sure the Rebels will go for it at the 21-yard line, a fourth down and a yard to go. The board wants quiet from the, the faithful here. The West Monroe faithful. He asks for it and gets it. Blitz the board, keeps it, gets the first down. Once again, Heffler gambled, got in the backfield, but the board shed a tackler, kept the ball, and turned it up the field, and the chains will move. 352 left in this one. West Monroe trying to leg out its third consecutive state championship game. The reps will take a timeout. As the board, bad angle and all, gains the first down and now they're just going to just hammer away that clock. 3.52 to go. The Rebels with an 11-point advantage and just trying to salt this away. This is the 5A state championship in the Gatorade Superdome Classic. First and 10 for West Monroe. I tell you, Renee Russell's made the most of its opportunity through the playoffs, coming in as a wild card. They've played well, played tough, and have represented that tough District 2 5A very well. Teams like Washita, Neville, of course, rusted in West Monroe Sulphur. in that district. Sulphur. Many thought Sulphur would be here. On the play, the run straight ahead. Lewis Britton, the ball carrier. Sulphur in District 3, 5A. And West Monroe just trying to bang away and... A blitz coming once again, Lester Jenkins. You know, they say Lester Jenkins reminds Coach Reeder of uh, Demetri Evans, who played at Haynesville and is now a defensive tackle with the University of Georgia. It speaks volumes of his ability. Robinson over the left side. Lester Jenkins again. You know, Demetri Evans, I remember him playing for Haynesville in this uh, tournament some, team, some time back in this uh, classic and going both ways for Haynesville and what an outstanding athlete he was and is for Georgia as a defensive tackle. West Monroe is now going over 300 yards rushing as a team. Jenkins will play his final game here at Ruston, 6'4", 250, and maybe down the road move on to the next level. Looking to pass, wrapped up and dropped is Laborde. Called down by Corliss Scott. Jeremy Hamilton. That'll bring up fourth down. And Hamilton just waiting. Look, he just shot the open gap right here. I guess Britton uh, was looking for someone to block, and, and Hamilton just shot right past him. And lucky that West Monroe retained possession. We're approaching two minutes here in the 5A state title. West Monroe, two of three on fourth down conversions here. They face a fourth and 10 from the 17. The board looks to pass. Looks for Turner and a late flag will come in. Turner did a good amount of acting. Now there's some flags that'll go flying. As there's some bumping down near the goal line between the two teams. 
Turner on the slant. We've contact, and Turner now is going to be held back by his teammates. Pass interference and personal foul against Rustin. Each penalty worth half the distance to the goal line. You know, he reminds me of, remember Gerald McNeil played for the Cleveland Browns? They call him the Ice Cube. That's him. Pass interference on the defense. First down. Is that like George Gerber? He was the Ice, ice Cube, Ice Man. Next thing you have Jerry Butt with the Ice Man. You'll have me confused. But Gerald McNeil played for Baylor. That's the play. We have a dead ball. Abilities. First of the foul on the white. Half the distance. It's first down. A lot of joint going on down there right now, and you know, a lot of these guys putting on the pads for the final time in their football career. Some are moving on. Some will be returning to their respective schools. And West Monroe would like to punch it in with under two minutes remaining. Still very impressed with Reed playing with that shoulder injury that's got to be quite painful, but he's sucking up for the good of the Rebels. Split backfield. Laporte will keep it and push ahead. And West Monroe looks to be the fourth state finalist to return to repeat. The two-way state finalist, Washita Christian, did not make it back here to the Dome. But Kentwood did and repeated. Evangel did and repeated in 3A. Curtis did in 4A and repeated. And here tonight, West Monroe will repeat as the 5A champion much like the Curtis and Evangel game that were rematch games, this rematch game closer than some might expect. And there won't be a repeat in 3A next year. Evangel will be up in 5A. Robinson in from three yards out. Four flags fly. As there's more talking and jawing going on. And the Rebels add an extra touchdown. Ball, personal foul on the white. Penalized on the extra point. Penalty will be on the extra point. You know, some would say, well, this will make the score not quite as close as the game was. But statistically, this score would fit with the rushing offense that West Monroe has mounted in this game. Brian Gray down with an injury and he's gaining some assistance from the trainers and support from his teammates in West Monroe with a 17-point lead, probably going to go for two with 75 ticks. It's, it's highly unlikely that the West Ruston Bearcats will mount any kind of serious threat for West Monroe. Tommy Henry even down, offering his assistance as Kenny Robinson just takes it power running right at Hamilton and the momentum was going forward, didn't, didn't have enough to stop Robinson. Touchdown, good, and completes a, a nice, long drive. Gray coming out of the game. And West Monroe will set up for one with Ayerdes to kick. Yardis will look to put the 32nd point on the board for the Rebels. Shifting, going on. Low kick. Good. 115 left in the fourth quarter. West Monroe in charge. Will three-peat and pick up the fourth state crown for this institution. Coach Don Shaw's. 18-point lead by the Rebels as they salt away yet another state title. This is the Gatorade Superdome Classic.
Ruston with one more chance offensively. Kickoff will come down to Goldsmith right at the one. He'll turn it back up, and he's got a seam. Breaking it on the outside. It's a foot race to the far side of the field. Goldsmith finally hauled down by Ayertis, the kicker. He'll make it all the way down to the 36-yard line. Big return. For Goldstein. And Goldsmith just giving everything he has, emptying his tank with 62 ticks to go in his high school career before he moves on to the next level. And Goldsmith has really done an outstanding job. Very proud of what he has accomplished in Ruston. And uh, all district performer in 98. Just a nice young man. They've done a good job. Well, Ruston will take its final time out. Ford gets a chance to snap the ball. They'd like to talk about it with 102 left. Now they have one left, I should say. They had two timeouts before they burned that one. Well, Coach Reader's not happy right now. Well, he's very used to coming to the Dome and winning. And this is a little different, of course, well-coached squad, some would say overachieving squad, to bring Rustin to the Dome this year. Rustin really, after that 42-6 defeat in Week 7 at the hands of West Monroe, has reeled off seven straight wins, including a big overtime win over Airline in the first round of the playoffs, 2017, on the road, then going to Washita, winning 26-7, hosting Sulphur, Winning that one 28-17. Lions looks down field, ball tip, intercepted but out of bounds, flag on the play. And beating Jesuit last week on the road, 6-3. So Rustin was only home once during the playoffs. You know, so much talent coming out of these teams over the last few years. It'll be so interesting to see how many of these players who move on to college and maybe even the higher level. We'll be playing on Sunday afternoons right here in the Superdome. So much talent, so many good coaching, so much good coaching, and uh, it's just interesting to, to see the, on Sunday afternoons these players who have played here high school football in the state of Louisiana return and play in the Superdome. To me, that's one of the allures of high school football. You get a chance to see these young men in the formative years and follow their career as they move on. First and 15. Three-step drop, player to hunt. He's got lots of Navy jerseys around him. Led by Brady James. Jay Olds is also there, the senior. It'll be third down. You'll see Hunt next year. Jack Hunt come back for his junior year. And Olds as well, senior, playing his final game for West Monroe. And Brady James, who knows how far he can go. What a great talent he is. 6'2", 6'3", 225, and probably outside linebacker in college, but the ability to play a free or strong safety or a monster position. The pitch is bad. Goldsmith tries to retrieve it and does. Falls on it at the 40-yard line. Big loss, and that will do the game. Yet another state title for West Monroe, their third consecutive, fourth overall under Don Shaws. And their biggest margin of victory in a state final game. 28-21 in 1993 over Destrohan. 24-21 over Karen Crow in 96. 22-19 over Shaw last year and a 32-14 win over district rival Ruston here in the Superdome. Two teams from North Louisiana travel all the way to southeastern Louisiana to decide the Louisiana State Championship. Thirty-six consecutive wins for West Monroe. The streak remains intact.
Let's go down to the field for our trophy presentation of this 5A final. State Farm agent Roger Cook of West Monroe. State Farm agent Skip Russell of Ruston. State Farm agent Tag Rome of Bossier City. And Mr. Leon Richardson, former marketing director of the Louisiana High School Athletic Association. The first award is the 1998 Class 5A State Runner-Up Trophy presented by State Farm Agent Skip Russell to Ruston High School. Head coach Tommy Reeder, Principal Charles Schreiber. The next award is the State Farm Outstanding Player for Ruston High School as selected by the working media, presented by State Farm Agent Tag Rome of Bossier City, goes to number 28, Jerry Goldsmith. The next award is the 1998 Biden official game ball presented by Mr. Leon Richardson, former marketing director of the LHSA, and it goes to head coach Don Schell. The next award is the State Farm Outstanding Player for West Monroe High School as selected by the working media. The award is presented by State Farm Agent Jim Mitchell of Lake Charles, and it goes to number six, Kenny Robinson. The final award presented by State Farm Agent Robert Cook of West Monroe is the 1998 Class 5A State Championship Trophy to the West Monroe Rebels. Head coach Don Charles, principal Ernest Buddy Reed. athleticism for West Monroe. Yeah, they're jubilant right now, and they earned a spot to be where they are, and coming back on a team, Rustin, that was... 
sorry. A happy sight for West Monroe as they win their third consecutive state title. They remain undefeated. Their winning streak intact, and they took the win 32-14, but had to earn it the hard way. A very pesky Ruston team held on and forced West Monroe to work for this one. Yeah, a very jubilant crowd right here, and deservedly so. They came back on a team that was leading and could have gained momentum in a team that had every reason for revenge, having lost 42-6 on October 16th. But the cream rises to the top, and West Monroe shown why they are rated as the best team in 5A and come away with yet another state title. Nationally ranked, locally adored by the fans in Monroe, the Rebels of West Monroe win yet another state championship for Coach Don Shaws. For Renee Nato and our entire crew, here from the Louisiana Superdome, it's been a great year. 1998 is complete. I'm Gerald Duhon. Until next time, saying so long, everybody.